Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for uh, Thursday, the 29th of September. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Good, Derek. Nice to be back with you in the in the morning. I see you're a company man today. Do you want to? Yeah, I'm wearing the, the, the Tim Sherwood Rangers Review <laughs> Gilly. Look at Wonderful. that, folks. Absolutely magnificent. I forgot I had it, actually. It's absolutely Baltic down here in Warrington. I took the dog out earlier, and I was uh, frantic, frantically looking for something warm to put on, and I discovered that uh, I had this. So on, on it came for the first time ever. Um, so, yeah, a uh, big fan of it. Um, Josh, you've got one as well, but you, you, you've you lost yours, apparently. You can't yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if I'll be walking about uh, Glasgow with that one, but um, with the company <laughs> on. But hey, when we're working from home, Derek, and with the energy energy prices, a wee gilet is not a bad idea, is it? Or a that body warmer, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, whatever the kids call it uh, these days. But uh, certainly keeping uh, my upper torso region uh, quite snug at the moment. So long may that continue. Um, but folk are tuning in to talk all things Rangers, Joshua. Um, before we do that, of course, you can see the little ticker below, folks. Um, we've got that tremendous offer on the website just now. Just... Uh, uh, one pound for two months worth of content. It really is a sensational deal. Uh, just two pounds ninety nine per month uh, thereafter. Everyone who's uh, subscribing are saying great things to us, so thank you for doing so. Um, and if you haven't already done so, I've plugged the, the link in the comments section. Head over, sign up, and I assure you, you won't be disappointed. Lots of great stuff on there this morning, actually. Uh, there's an interview that, that Johnny's did with uh, Mark Warburton uh, talking about uh, Lee Wallace, of course, given that... Uh, he retired uh, from football at the beginning of the week. There's a great scouting piece there from uh, Patrick Kasky on a South Korean uh, player who could be the answer to that problematic right wing uh, position. Uh, and of course, uh, late last night, we released a, uh, a snippet of the, the James Bisgrove interview uh, I did. I got him uh, commenting on the SPFL TV deal and what he thought uh, of that. And it's fair to say he felt that the, the, the governing body, the Football League, could have got a much better, much more competitive and, and valuable deal than they got in the end. Um, okay, let's uh, talk. Uh, 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 let's discuss uh, some of the other news that obviously was affecting Rangers. Uh, yesterday, uh, as this came out, uh, Joshua Carlos Pena, uh, Rangers uh, appealed to the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Switzerland over the termination of his contract. Back in 2019, it followed uh, multiple examples of dishonesty over his abuse of alcohol. Um, uh, Pena at the time uh, appealed to complain to FIFA that Rangers had breached their contract with him uh, and the three-person panel uh, agreed with the Mexican Rangers were in line to pay a significant seven-figure sum as compensation for the final two years of his deal. Uh, but fortunately, uh, Cass have upheld their original decision uh, and Rangers mean that they don't need to pay any other uh, money out to uh, the, the former uh, midfielder. Um, so that's good news in a sense. But uh, Joshua, the Carlos Pena transfer and era back then is one, I think, that's largely forgettable. I couldn't honestly could not believe it when I because I was off until yesterday and just catching up on stuff last night and I seen that and I thought this can't this can't be real this must be a an opinion piece or something um so just just crazy but as you say obviously in a serious note I'm sure the, uh, the Rangers will be very happy to actually have that sorted um Pena was such a funny player because I I think it was in Kashinya's interview that Johnny did. Um, yeah. He spoke of how highly he was rated in South America at that time, but it's an example of when you know, a club gets a manager in and then they get his players in and then it doesn't work with that manager, so then you're left with a squad suited to you know a very unique maybe style of football or a specific manager. Pena certainly fell into that bracket. He did have that game at St. Johnston where he looked good, I remember that. Um, but aside from that, I think he just always never really looked like an athlete did he um and and was restricted to those runs into the box so yeah it was a bit of a blast in the past and i thought you summed it up well in your your newsletter derek that it was just a a bad period um so you know and that kind of sums up the amount of, the, of money that was paid for um for, for Pena back in the day but yeah, yeah. I, was, I was surprised as anyone to see that kind of come out the woodwork yesterday 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So good news uh, all round, I think, with regards to that. And uh, yeah, the less said about that, that you're in that transfer, the better. Mm -hmm. we, we've, we'll, we'll, we'll always have uh, McDermott Park, Joshua. Uh, he's two goals up there. Uh, Great uh, couple of goals. Uh, <laughs> half of those crosses, it was, it was, you know, that 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 was um, a match made in heaven for a mere game. And then there was one other game he played quite well. I don't know if it was Partick Thistle. Partick was, Thistle for Hill, Partick. yeah. Yeah, because um, I remember it. I remember his front post header and being in the stand, the opposite from the main stand. And I think he got in at the front post. Um, I don't know if it was a corner, maybe. Um, but yeah, that was. I think that was about it, wasn't it? Maybe a goal at home to Aberdeen as well in a three 0 game, but yeah. not a, not a um, desirable highlight reel for a Rangers attacker. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as a uh, multiple man, seventy eight, quite rightly puts it, absolute waste of space. Uh, I don't think you, you will find many arguments uh, against that. Um, okay, let's uh, move on. There's a comment coming in here talking about my Gili from Tam Brown. Better look than the Peruvian pipe band cardigan that I had on yesterday. How dare That's you, cool. Tam? That is a that is a quality garment. Um, so we we can't have abuse like that. That's a yellow card for you, Tam. <laughs> uh, no, no more of that. Um, let's talk about some of the, the the articles you had on the website, Josh. I know you've been off, but um, you put in a power of work um, before you went off on your holly bags. Uh, and there was some great content on the website over the last week. Um, now, I wanted to touch on uh, the article you, you did about uh, Rabbi Matondo and yeah. Ryan Kent. Uh, you've suggested that, that it might be an idea to switch uh, flanks uh, to get the best out of them. Now, I've, I've been shouting about this for, for some time. I don't know why Rabi Matondo hasn't had an opportunity over on that left-hand side. He played a, uh, a great deal of last season at Circle Bruges over there and did pretty well. Um, yeah. Ryan Kent, as we know, is uh, so out of form it defies belief. Perhaps this, uh, this is a, an alteration that could revive both uh, both. Uh, uh, both players current form what, what can you give us a wee insight into that piece i know you put it in the in the comments <laughs> section go go do go check it out folks yeah and I'll, I'll put it in the the description as well after i've finished this uh just to if you want to go and read it uh we've looked at a few things in this international break that i guess are, are, are topics of conversation and sometimes it's a bit hypothetical in this situation you know can van broncos kind of kill two birds with one stone um, and we can touch on that. I've also looked at Tom Lawrence and why he's so important, looking at the numbers that kind of reveal that, um, Leon King, amongst other things. So to, to focus first on Ryan Kent and Rabi Matondo, Kent has been out of form. Um, I don't think anyone would dispute that. We know he's not going to provide a goal threat from the left, really. I think that's I'm quite comfortable saying that because if you look at his shot maps from the last couple of seasons and you'll see that on, on the piece, there is that repetition of shot when he's cutting in from the left, he just simply does not score. And as we've touched on before, when he played more central um, initially in the, in the 2020-21 season, <clears throat> he scored eight goals. A lot of them were from central locations. Now, to caveat, I was very much of the opinion that moving Kent out wide to the left was a good thing. And I think it has been. Um, last season, you know, his creative, underlying creative numbers went up. Um, but what I, I now think you've got is someone who um, isn't in a good run of form and maybe the best... The, the alternative to that is we know Matondo can play out there and Rangers don't have, they don't have a solution on the right. And they've played four players there in seven league games. So you can't, in my opinion, say that there's a definitive plan there. And if the plan is to keep chopping and changing, is it out of the question to, to try something different? Play a player like Kent, who's comfortable in those central locations. We know that from where he played under Gerrard. Um, would, but you can also hold the width and, and hit the touchline and allow James Tavenier to come inside. I think it's sometimes slightly restrictive to have him always out wide um, as opposed to coming in field more, which he was doing increasingly kind of in the last couple of seasons, particularly last season um, under uh, Van Bronckhorst when he initially came in. But the, the, the other main point is, when is Van Bronckhorst's best period of domestic football? I'm going to put that to you, Derek. His, his best six, seven game run. Um, I'm not sure. I'm scratching my head. Scratching your head. The first, the first six, seven games. I don't think he's won. Uh, well, that was that was that was a keeping the zero either. Keeping the zero era, but it was also six successive wins, which hasn't happened in the yeah. league since. Um, and yes, teams might have adjusted to his style, and there was issues with that that were exposed in the old firm game. But one of the things that I think was great about that team, even though Yanis Hadji wasn't a natural winger, um, you've seen the benefit of having that. 
kind of dual threat out wide. Whereas at the moment, Rangers only have that on one wing with Kent. They only have that 1v1 threat on one side of the pitch. And if you could maximise that against um, defences when you need to move the block a lot, you need to inject pace. I think often domestically, Van Bronckhorst's best performances have come when he's played with with those two um, wide wingers, two threats. And obviously, it was kind of one of Scott Wright and Fashion Sakala back then. Rabi Matondo has been brought in in the summer as the winger. You know, the quotes in the piece that Ross Wilson said, um, we wanted to bring an A winger this this summer and Rabi Matondo is, is that effectively. Um, so he's been brought in to play games. Yeah, and yeah, the, the the main point being Ryan Kent is not in good form. Maybe just changing something up would would benefit him, um, allow him to play a little bit more central. As I say, I I, I think under Gerrard at the end that was working against him, but I don't think he's a player necessarily that has, in my opinion, um, I don't think his decision making is, is is always excellent. Maybe it's you know mixing up his role, getting him to do something different, give it re- refreshing the situation in some ways could work for for the team's benefit. Because if you look at a front four behind the striker of Matondo, Kent, Tillman and Lawrence, that should give you a lot of, of, of numbers domestically. But Rangers aren't, we know from, from Kent, if you're playing Kent and, and Scott Wright on the wings, you're not going to get a lot of goals from there. And when Rangers don't have Tillman and Lawrence and those pockets inside, you're not going to get a lot of goals from there either. So you need that for me domestically. And I think going into this next run of games, um, there needs to be a, a template that has goals outside of the, the central striker. Yeah, uh, Denzel, Denzel makes a joke here. Uh, it says, as long as we're not in the keep the four era now, Derek, yeah, let's hope not. Uh, let's hope we're, we're past that that, that stage, uh, especially when we're uh, heading to uh, Anfield uh, next week. Cannot wait for that game, by the way. Um, Joshua, can you can you wait to heading down to Anfield? That'll be your first time down there, isn't it? Watching the Rangers side taking on yeah. Liverpool. Sorry for, for just sort of taking a wee detour here. but No, that's fine. Um, yeah. Speaking of speaking of Champions League, we should also uh, also mention that the women's team who were very unlucky last yes. night conceded a conceded a by all accounts pretty um, unfair uh, referee decision. A dubious and, penalty. And not, yeah, yeah, why that wasn't given, uh, I, I've no idea. And then Benfica go up the park and, and I think equalised it, and then they go on and, and score another. But um, yeah, they did the, the club proud last night. Um, so well done, uh, Malky Thompson uh, and the ladies. Still a great achievement, isn't it, Josh? I mean, reaching that. That stage and going over there, it's great experience for them. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I didn't catch the away leg last night, um, but I, I watched the home leg, and um, yeah, absolutely, up, obviously up against a, such a high level of European opposition. But fantastic to see um, how I, I think how they competed over the couple of games, um, and and that a referee decision has such a big impact in the game. Sometimes I guess tells you how uh, close it was before that. So yeah, just on Champions League, important to. To speak about that, um, and 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 looking forward to Liverpool. Yeah, I've I've only actually been to a stadium tour at Anfield, and that was before the. I think it's a new main stand, so really yeah. looking forward to that. I mean, a huge couple of games, Hearts away. Um, Rangers need to win for for all the. It's only two points. That wasn't, you know, necessarily Rangers clawing that back. It was obviously Celtic going and dropping points. It was not as if Rangers have went and won an old firm. Um, whatever. Uh, I, th- I think now is the time you need to put the pressure on. Um, I th- Rangers play first this weekend, don't they? So they can go top. Yes. I mean, there's there's not only three points. It has to. You can only take three points in that game if you want to. I think or assert, assert some sort of um, dominance yeah, in, in this title race. Yeah, you, you you need to absolutely. So obviously that was one of the early games on the Van Bron course that was um, it was so successful. Tom Lawrence could be back. Um, another piece I've done over the international break is just looking at how important he is. Looking at the attack and midfield options that Rangers had in their final league game for the international break against Dundee United compared to um, Lawrence and Tillman, what they give you in terms of the touches in the opposition box, the chance creation numbers. Um, I, th- I think it's so important that they both get back to playing in tandem. We've only seen them play those two kind of number eights once in the league. Derek, for me, they need to do it every week, almost every week. Maybe there's an argument time castle away or, or whatnot. You have a slightly more conservative midfield. Um but largely I'd like to see Rangers go and just go and attack and, and I think that has to be reflected in the, the team lineup. Yeah, yeah. I think if Tom Lawrence is in that match day squad, I think that's going to be a huge boost for Rangers. Another player that, that could be in the squad, um going by 
he's, he's got a lot of supporters uh, a little bit giddy and excited. Joshua's uh, Kimar Roof. He posted a, a video on his Instagram account yesterday uh, with uh, asking Jim McAllister if he's printing up his shirt. Uh, Brian House says, uh, hearing Roof is on his way back. Hope so. Now, we'll speak to Giovanni van Bronckhorst tomorrow. We'll get an update on him. Uh, of course, he was rather coy when asked about it after the Dundee United game. He said he doesn't know when if it's going to be soon or, or, or whenever he's going to be back. However, posting things like that on, on your Instagram page um, makes fans think that a first-team return is nearing Joshua. Now, he hasn't played since that Europa League final. We know he's injury-prone. However, if Rangers can somehow get him back on the pitch, that is, as the old cliche uh, goes, like a new signing. Yeah, I know. For how long, that's always the I know, I know. Was, isn't it? For how long. But you, you, you've looked at the bench on a, you know, you look at the team that started against Dundee United and there's so many players and they're not available. And Rangers do have everyone back. It's a strong squad. Um, you feel like they've had, you know, enough time without a certain numbers of players that they they merit um, getting them back and, and, and having a number of options. I don't see where Roof fits into this team at the moment. Um, that said, at the end of last season, they obviously came in and... and what about Ross is there? Roof on the right. Well, <clears throat> Van Broncos didn't do it last season. I, I think that yeah. narrow role can suit him. But, I mean, we wrote... I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, to Ross's point, I wrote a, an article about that uh, last season, how, how Rangers could kind of fit Roof in. Um, and, you know, Van Broncos hasn't been playing an out-and-out winger all the time on the right, so so maybe it could work. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess he didn't try it, so I'd be surprised if he, if he opts for it now. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, last season... I remember consistently saying you need to get roof in that team because you need goals now behind the central striker. And we know Van Bronckhorst probably is going to only play one striker unless something changes and he does go for Cholak and Morelos. Um, you need goals outside of that. And I think that you need to, Rangers need to play um, uh, square pegs and no, what is it? What is it saying? Not round square pegs, pegs, round holes. Yeah. Whatever the good option is of that, they need to do that. Get your best attacking midfielders in. Um, the right wing does remain a bit of an issue, so maybe you could, I don't know, do something, do something in there. But I'd be surprised if he comes right back into the first and picture because he didn't last season. Um, the con, you know, the, the opposite point to that, as you remember, his hat trick away at St Mirren. Um, everyone yeah. knows what he can do, how how lethal he can be. Um, but it's hard to to plan for a player as the point we've made a hundred times when you don't know how long he's going to be um, kind of available for. Yeah, CGM55 says Roof and Cholak uh, as a two. Um, mate, <clears> who knows? Uh, surprised. We, we need to get him back on the pitch, though. Aldo <laughs> takes uh, credence to what I say. It'll be like a new signing. Getting a bit carried away. But, uh, yeah, going by his Instagram video, uh, I think he's starting up front at, at Tynecastle. That's uh, I, I'm going all in here. Hopefully he came out Roof. But, uh, listen, we know he's got his, his, his injury problems uh, to seek, and he's been plagued with them uh, throughout much of his career. Um, but he, he's another player. Uh, there's too many of them on the treatment table at Ibrooks just now. Uh, and if Rangers can get a tune at them, uh, then uh, that'll be uh, great stuff, great news. Um, there's a lot of comments coming in. I want to get to a few more here. Uh, Tony Houston says, any news on Hollander, guys, when he could make a return to the team? No, uh, no idea. We'll try and get an update tomorrow, Tony, on him. But Hollander, Joshua, I've sort of given up hope of seeing him in the Rangers jersey this calendar year, at least. Um, I may be wrong, but he's another one where it looks like his Ibrox career uh, looks to be uh, petering out somewhat, which is a shame because he's another one like Ruth when he's fit uh, on his game. He's one of the first names in the team sheet. Yeah, I mean, the last update the manager gave, which was... Uh, I think after the Dundee United game, um, he kind of put Suter and Hollander in the same bracket when effectively saying, I, I, I'll get the quotes up in the next question you, you read out, Derek, but yeah. effectively saying that he didn't think it would be <clears throat> soon. Also, I guess he's reluctant to put a time frame on a player who, you know, has had such a, how many minutes has he played since um, the, the the old firm header? You know, I, I, I can't I can't think of many. Um, obviously got injured when he came back against St Mirren, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll find that quote while you read out another question, Derek. Oh, here yeah. I've got it here. I've got it here. Oh, John well Spitzer and Philip Hollander will take longer to come back. They won't be back after the break, so quite ambiguous with the time frame. Tom Lawrence has a good chance to be available again. 
uh, after and Kima Roof, we will have to see. Lawrence has two weeks in the break to recover and it will be close for Hart. So um, looks like Roof, based on what he's posting, might be might be back soon. Um, Lawrence, you just have to hope that he's had that international break to recover and um, yeah, he's, he's, he's ready to go. Yeah, and it's a good point here made by CGM55. Holanda didn't actually have any significant injury problems in Italy. I did have a, a look at this, uh, and, and you're right, by the way. It may have been out for a, a few days here or there uh, when he was playing it in Serie A, uh, but nothing like uh, the length of time he's been out whilst being at Rangers. So, yeah, listen, it's, it's hugely frustrating. Uh, not only that, of course, a lot of comments come in about John Suter as well. He's another one we, we knew about his injury record before joining the club. It remains to be seen when he'll be back in contention. Ben Davis is another one. Um, too many players, too many big, big players that are out uh, at the moment that Rangers need back in contention. If they get if they get the players back, then uh, the, the squad is, is is a lot stronger. Of course, it is. Um, and a good comment coming in uh, as well. He says uh, Lowry is hopefully not too far away as well. Yeah, yeah he posted, of course, I think last week or the t- tail end of the week before yeah. uh, with the boots back on. So, uh, listen, he'll be, he'll be back in, uh, I'd imagine, getting up to speed in the B team, Joshua, like he was prior to that horrific challenge from, from Ali Love. And I think, uh, fingers crossed this time, um, mm-hmm. he won't be too far away from featuring in, in a match day squad in the first team. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see Alex Lowry back in that team. Um, again, someone that can play from the left, central, just takes a risk when he goes forward. It's a shame because you look at a game like Dundee United, he'd have definitely played. Um, and then uh, another world, he doesn't get that injury when he comes back in the summer, doesn't have that uh, tackle, which is more like an assault on him in the, in the B team game to, to put him out for, for longer. Um, and then is able to kind of you know take up more of those opportunities that would have been coming his way. Um, in the first team, you only have to look at that performance at Tyne Castle. I know it's a bit of a dead rubber game, but still that finish. Um, how many players in the Rangers first team do that? You know, we don't see Ryan Kent do that from the left. I know he's a different player. Um, but maybe shows you, you know, on the opposite side, what a player like Lowry gives you from out there as a as a goal threat. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully see him back soon. And and obviously, it's a positive to see his, his boots back on because when you saw that challenge in the first instance, part of you would think that could be could be really bad. Um, Rangers, if if you get Lowry, if you get Hadji, if you get Roof, if you get all these players back in, um, you're in a much stronger position. Um, but again, it's what it's going into almost October now. Yeah, um, had, yeah. Forget forget Hadji for for now. He's not coming back until you're, you're awesome. looking January. Uh, being <laughs> optimistic. Yeah, and and hopefully the Hadji that comes back is more akin to the Hadji in the 2020, 2021 season, where his numbers are really good. Um, fourteen goals and assists was it? Um, the highest, uh, definitely the highest underlying creative numbers in that Rangers team. Um, would would maybe suit him now playing those two kind of attacking number eights um at, at home in particular. Uh but yeah, you just have to hope that the the squad and is in a, a good situation because it's a big month coming up until the World Cup. And yes. um, then you have the unique situation of a, a six week break. Um so you don't want to be in 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 a bad situation in the league there. Hopefully get something in the Champions League to hold on to. All of that's gonna be that's gonna be very difficult against uh against Liverpool on, on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Some more comments coming in here. I like this. <laughs> William White says, uh, Morning, guys. Heading to Scotland from Belfast in the morning for a mega booze up. I'll watch the game uh, somewhere. Uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy your time, William. That sounds, uh, sounds like a, a, a great uh, a great weekend. Hopefully you're celebrating three points over uh, in the capital uh, as well. Uh, and Jim McKero, I love this for dedication. Uh, Joshua says, uh, good morning, lads. On holiday in sunny Portugal, <laughs> White can't understand why we can't go out before 10 any morning. <laughs> well, Jim, Jim's a Jim's a good friend of the show and a regular, um, a good, I enjoy a regular chat with him on a match day. Um, and he was telling me he was off for a nice break uh, in the international break. So we didn't miss any football at Ibrox. So, Jim, have a nice day, mate. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you're still stuck around. That is sensational planning, Jim. Uh, take my hat off to you for that. Unlike me, uh, where next week I'm in Finland uh, when Rangers are, are taking on Liverpool. So, uh, but that might mean Rangers get a result because, of course, the <laughs> horrendous European record that I possess. <laughs> Never seen Rangers win away. No, no. If, if that happened, Derek, that would give that would give some certain people a lot of ammo. I'm thinking yeah. Adam Thornton. <laughs> Give him a lot of ammo. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Aldo says, uh, Jim is a legend. Uh, yeah, uh, quite right too, Jim. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And a uh, big shout out to, to Mrs. Uh, McCarroll as well for uh, for being understanding. Uh, yep. They're tuned in as well because it's a, a great content on a, on a weekday morning. Um, lots of some other interesting points to come in. And I want to get your... Uh, your view on this, Josh? Uh, I've got to admit, I never watched uh, Scotland uh, the other night against Ukraine. Yeah. However, John Dooley mentions, what are your views on Ryan Porteous? Could he be a good pre-contract signing in January? I'm not too sure what his uh, contract situation is I mean, uh, at Hibs, uh, I've got to admit. Um, by all accounts, Johnny was singing his praises the other day there uh, yeah. for only Scotland debut. Uh, right, we all know... Uh, <laughs> He's uh, he's not the most favoured uh, player amongst the Rangers support. It's it's fair to say, and understandably so. Uh, I think uh, the boy, by all accounts, has got talent. Uh, may have a, a, a screw loose or two. Um, but what what's, what's your opinion on this, Josh? Have you seen enough of Ryan Porteous to consider him as a a good signing uh, for Rangers? I don't think it would be popular in the initial <laughs> sense. Um, I think obviously you know. Is, he's, I thought he did well on his debut and um, pretty good with the ball his, his feet um, has played a lot of games but I think aside from that uh, yeah probably wouldn't be just wouldn't be a very popular sign so I guess maybe sometimes that kind of rules that sort of uh, move out the, the other thing I took away from the Scotland game was I thought Ryan Jack looked um, sharper um, for me he hasn't looked as sharp as he normally does at the start of this season which i was surprised at because i thought after uh <laughs> there we go i thought after a full pre-season he'd, he'd maybe look sharper than he did when he came back at the kind of midway through last season um but hopefully he he that's a, a sign of things to come because you need one of the other things we, we spoke about before the break you needed a lot of players to kind of hit their best form i think over this run some like Cholak who's who's performing really well Tavernier who all, you always know what you're going to get from him performance wise and um, hopefully Ryan Jack is one of those players that can come in and, and look a little bit more like himself than he did in, in the previous few um games prior to the international break yeah the, the general consensus from the comments is that they just shouldn't be touching uh Ryan Porteous so I think uh, we'll <laughs> leave that one there uh other comment came that came in uh, that I wanted to touch on Josh well first of all Scott Spelder says uh with the Ranger Review considered an evening early show at least once a week. Uh, that's a, a good shout. Uh, I know we'd, we'd, we'd generally do it on uh, the build-up to, to European games, um, but that's something we'll, we'll speak to the boss man, uh, Scott Spelder, and we'll see uh, if that's something. If there's demand there, uh, it might be something to consider uh, going forward. Uh, Ian McPhee, uh, with, with a point here, Joshua, um, this is a, a contentious one. Do you think that Gilles Dower personality is having a detrimental effect on the team's performance? I don't necessarily think he's Dower in any way, shape or form. I, maybe I know what you mean. He's more relaxed, I've got to say. He's very uh, he's very good to deal with in terms of, of, of the press. He's, uh, he talks well, but I can see his point maybe uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, post-match interviews and what have you. Maybe he wants his manager to be a bit more spiky, a bit more Gerard-like, perhaps. Um, whereas uh, Van Bronckhorst, I think, is your, your stereotypical uh, Dutch coach, um, where he's uh, quite relaxed uh, most of the time. Uh, is that having a detrimental impact on the team's performance? I mean, I, I don't think so. I, I think Dewar, I don't think Gio's Dewar, I think he's, he's composed and he's pretty unflappable. Whenever you speak to people at the club about um what he's like or um whatever then you get that impression that he is it doesn't go too high it doesn't go too low he, yeah he seems quite assured he's obviously as a, a professional um sportsman has went to the very very top played in you know what literally captain his country in a world cup final which is the pinnacle of of, of football and um, even if he, he didn't win it he's played in for some of the biggest clubs in the world um as well as that so I think it's just the style and yeah you know to go to, to the Gerard's point I guess there's positives and negatives of that too that that emotion you know Gerard spoke himself about having to almost tone down that emotional um side and then and, and transitioning from a player and a captain to, to a manager um but yeah it's Van Bronckhorst style he's not going to give you lots away I think he is someone that as you say Derek he's respectful to deal with um but he doesn't Come across as someone who I, I can't think of times I've seen him that genuinely angry. Um, but yeah, every I guess every style has its 
positives and its negatives. I don't yeah. think it's necessarily having a, um, a, a, a negative attitude, as the comment alludes to. I think at times the football in the first seven games, again, as we covered on the website last week, looking at what's gone wrong for Rangers domestically, even though the, the, the gap is only two points, I think that they've started too slow and there's too much of a focus. Just personally, I think it's too much of a focus sometimes on control and you know, if you're if you're coming to play Rangers and you get through the first 20, 30 minutes, that's I guess the majority of teams' games plan game plan domestically anyway. So maybe that plays into the opposition too much much and allows them to settle into it. Doesn't complement the crowd, which once they get up for it and once you know early attacks. Um, but I think that's a separate point. I don't think he's I think he's composed and probably quite an assured personality. That's certainly what you get. Um, yeah. kind of in my opinion. Yeah, and as John Dooley quite rightly says, he is a good ambassador for the club. But as we know in football, results matter. It's a results-driven business. And let's yeah. hope uh, uh, he can uh, uh, get three points at Tynecastle on Saturday. It's, it's a big ask. Of course, it's going to be uh, intimidating. We all know what it's like over there. It's the Hearts' Cup final. Uh, but Rangers need to turn up. If they've got uh, title aspirations, they go out there, uh, puff their chests out and, and get three points and come back across the M8. Uh, sitting top of the table momentarily at least um, okay folks I think that'll do us there we'll, we'll have a, a big proper preview to the game at Tyne Castle tomorrow um, as I mentioned just a reminder we've got that great offer on the website just a pound for two months worth of content head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details um, we'll be back again tomorrow but until then enjoy the rest of your Thursday